Welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Thursday, December 23rd. Um, that was Go Tell It on the Mountain. Um, and that was Fred Hammond doing that. It comes from the Wow Christmas Gospel album. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. Starting off a little with Go Tell It on the Mountain, which goes really well with today's message. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, today, uh, we're looking at 1 Peter 4. Uh, the first letter, uh, Peter's first letter, the fourth chapter. So if you want to get your Bibles out, um, let me say good morning to all of you. <clears throat> good morning, Barbara and Priscilla. It's good to have you here today, holding you in prayer as we start our day together. And good morning, Michelle and Daniel. I'm glad you're here too, holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Esther and Celia. I'm glad you're both here holding you in prayer as we start this day. And good morning, Vinette and Donna, holding you both in prayer. I'm glad you're here. Good morning, Janet, and good morning, Augusta. Welcome. I'm holding you in prayer today. And Genevieve and Andrea, I'm glad you're here too holding you both in prayer. 
Good morning, Sheila and Betty. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm holding you in prayer as we start our day. And good morning, Marilyn and Gail. Um, it's good to be with you as well. Holding you in prayer, holding all of you in prayer as we start our day together. Um, so again, today we're looking at 1 Peter 4. And I'm going to be reading 7, 8, and 9. 7, 8, and 9. 1 Peter 4, verses 7 through 9. And as you take your Bibles out, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to be the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And it's good to gather with you each day. Good morning, Rosetta. I'm glad you're with us today. So let's look at 1 Peter 4, 7 through 9. It tells us this. Peter tells us these words. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourself, discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers over a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another with eight, without complaining. And I'm going to go on one more verse. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Above all, maintain constant love for one another. For love covers over a multitude of of sins. Our devotion this morning comes from Bob Goff's book, Live in Grace, Walk in Love. And today it is entitled, We Are Living Letters. We are living letters. Every time we love people without an agenda, we add a page. And this is what he says. There's a movie called Stranger Than Fiction where the actor, Will Farrell plays a work-a-day guy who gets stuck in the rut of his routine. He's quite meticulous, too, which doesn't help. He times how long he brushes his teeth and sub-times the top and bottoms of his mouth. His closet is never disorderly. Everything has its exact spot. He takes the same routine, the same route to work, clocks in and out at the same time, and never deviates from the routine. Until one day he starts hearing a voice. It's not a voice in his head. It's an audible voice. Spoiler alert. This voice is the narration of a fiction writer whose book somehow has him as the main character. Without his permission, she starts writing his life, his real life. It's a fun plot device, especially if you love books, but it puts on display, I think, the fact that we don't live our story in isolation. You and I may not have some faraway writer typing out the steps we take, but the steps we take are influencing the stories other people are writing with their lives. When people look at the followers of Jesus, they see us as a team living in a combined story. When someone does something lovely in the name of Jesus, they've just added another page to the story that we're telling about him. The truth is, we are living letters. Every time that we love without an agenda, we're telling the story of Jesus's life all over again. So the question is, what story are you telling about love these days. 
So everybody has, um, you know, an idea of what, you know, what is the, what is the Bible? Uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. I, I know some people have done that acronym. Other people say the the Bible is, um, you know, it, it's my playbook, <laughs> you know. Uh, everybody's got different ideas of what the Bible is. But when I look at the Bible, I see God's sweeping story of redemption. God's sweeping story of redemption. Um, I see imperfect people. I see broken people. I see people who didn't feel worthy enough to be called to be needed by God. I see humanity's um, brokenness, their desire to go their own way, and yet their need for God. I see God intervening on behalf of his creation over and over again. I see times when God is frustrated with us, but I also see God's desire for redemption, for um, reconnection, for communion with his creation and with all of creation that, that all of us might find redemption. God's love letter. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, whoo, it is, it's, it's love, but it's, it's rough. It, it's rough. So we're a part of this story of redemption. And the role that we play is in the way that we live, telling the story, being a part of the story, giving witness to the story. Uh, it's one of my, one of my favorite hymn, uh, carols for Christmas is Go Tell on the Mountain, which is why I started it today and um i started with that song today yes tough love <laughs> thank you barbara um go tell it on the mountain uh it's just a reminder that that after we have experienced the risen i mean not the risen the newborn uh baby after we experience incarnation um, we are called to go and tell. Now, we are also called to go and tell it on the mountain after experiencing resurrection as well, the risen Christ. But <clears throat> too often, we keep the story to ourselves. We think, who could possibly want to hear this, right? What could I have possibly have to tell another person? How could I possibly be a part of this? I am so flawed. How could God use me? And so we say nothing. And, and my friends, that is the worst thing that we can do. To not tell others about what God is doing. Um, it, it binds up the gospel. It no longer becomes good news. We tell good news about everything. We tell people good news about uh, a favorite recipe. We tell people good news about a movie we enjoyed. We tell people good news about all kinds of things, but we don't tell them about what God is doing in our lives. For some reason, we think people won't want to hear that, or it won't matter to people, or somehow I'll feel like I don't fit in in the workplace or in this group of friends who, who don't go to church and, and don't believe in God. But there are ways that we can give witness, that we can tell others. There are ways that we can have a profound impact by sharing a witnessing, which is part of what we uh, Methodists are called to do, as well as all God's people, is to give witness to what God is doing and when we do that, it is it another page is written in the story of God's redemption of the world. Friends, we are a part of that story. We find ourselves in the characters 
of our of the Bible. We see ourselves in their frailty. We see ourselves in their constant rejection of God and needing to turn around. We are in there. We have been called to be a part of God's redeeming love in the world. So today, one thing, find one way to share a witness. And it doesn't have to be big. Maybe it's just something small, but find an opportunity to give witness to someone about what God is doing in your lives. Go, tell it on the mountain. Tell it wherever you are this day. Because friends, it is good news. It is good news that the world is hungering and thirsting for. So today, who will you share a witness of God's redeeming love in your life. Let us pray. God of unconditional, redeeming love. Lord, we come this morning acknowledging that too often we don't tell the good news. We keep it to ourselves, fearful that others may not accept it, fearful that it may not be heard, fearful of what it might make us look like in the face of opposition. And yet still, you call us to share about this redeeming love. Work in and through us this day, Lord. Give us boldness to speak of the truth in our life. Give us courage to step out and offer the good news that we might offer freedom, offer peace, offer a release from the bonds of this world to someone in need this day. Guide us today, Lord, that we might be about the work, your work of redemption in the world. We ask all of this, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So where will you bear witness and love without agenda? Yeah, I liked that too, this day. God loves you, my friends. <clears throat> and so do I, and so do I. So just wanna put in another little plug. Christmas Eve worship is soon, oh my goodness, we're just two days away from Christmas Eve. So I wanna invite you to come and be with us in person or virtually at 7.30. Uh, we're going to have a holy family with a newborn child that'll be there, as well as um, dance and brass. And uh, it will be uh, a wonderful story. Uh, I mean, a wonderful service. And I will be sharing um, a message entitled, Not a silent night, not a silent night, but we will sing silent night. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing you in two days. Have a very blessed day, my friends, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.